Hi everyone, I am Shukran Karosmanoğlu from University of Hamburg. And today I will present our paper that I co-authored with Sebastian Cementowski, Leonard Nake, Frank Steinke, and Jens Kruger. Physical inactivity is becoming more and more of a problem. The majority of adolescents are not physically active. Factors that affect our lifestyle, such as sitting for long hours, as most of us do, and the necessary regulations made due to COVID, can trigger physical inactivity, especially for our lower body. However, lower body exercises and the physical activities like walking, running, or jumping are vitally important for our health. In our research, we focus on training people's vertical jump performance using a VR exert game. Because jumping is a fundamental movement that is not only required for many sports, but is also used for general fitness. To understand the requirements of designing a VR jump training exert game, we conducted semi-structured interviews with experts from different domains, such as sports research or physical therapy. Our thematic analysis indicated that jumps are mainly used in sports and have numerous benefits for general health. Jump training combines reactive and strength exercises. Incorrect executions of maximal jumps leads to injuries. Jump training should increase gradually and account for individual differences. VR jump training can provide real-time feedback and boost motivation, yet safety might be an issue with VR. Based on the insights from our expert interviews, we designed Jump Extra VR to train vertical jumps. We used Vibe Pro and attached Vibe trackers to the player shins and waist, leading to a total of 6 tracking points. We divided our game into 4 levels of increasing difficulty. So in the first 3 levels, the players perform rhythmic movements to a song before working on their jump technique in the last level. Our first level, called Top to the Beat, features 4 lanes with approaching colored tiles. The players must tap with the correct foot on the right tile. This way, they warm up and train their balance, coordination and reaction time. After completing this level, the players continue with a VR version of a children's game. Now, the players must perform a small hop on the spot and then land with their left, right or both feet on the correct tile. After tapping and hopping, the players finally get to jump in the third level. The simple task in this run is to avoid all the obstacles. Of course, the jump over the hurdle is the central movement in this level. Still, we also included side weights and hanging off obstacles for more variety. Another step towards an individual training experience is our adaptive difficulty feature. In all three levels, the game constantly monitors the player's performance and switches between the three difficulty levels accordingly. Finally, after training the requirements for good jumping, players get to perform full jumps in the last level. Here, they have to perform 5 maximal jumps. After each jump, they see an instant replay of their performance. Also, they are informed of their jump height and technical quality. We assess this technical quality based on 4 criteria from our expert interviews. The player should jump with both feet simultaneously and swing their arms in parallel up to chest height. For landing, they should absorb the impact with the entire body while avoiding a knock-knee position. Our game analyzes the captured movement data of every jump and rates it according to this criteria. Then it presents personalized feedback to the players so they can improve their technique in the next repetition. With the design finalized, we run a mixed method study with 25 participants to explore how they perceived our XR game in terms of cyber sickness, mood, player experience, and game performance. Our pre post measure test showed that only the post nausea scores were significantly higher than the press scores. We also see that the player experience and physical activity enjoyment were generally high. However, players did not feel particularly high mastery in the game. 
In the first level, the mean of hit ratio of participants reached to 78%. In the second level, the participants performed slightly worse. In the obstacle course, the hit ratio was better than the first two levels. The participants mainly did not improve their jump height in the final level over the five jumps. However, participants improved their technique score slightly over the five jumps. Our thematic analysis indicated that the main advantages of this game are accessibility and enjoyment, but participants also reported injury concerns. The game did not cause serious safety and usability issues, yet there were some instances are reported by players, such as difficulty of staying in the designated play area. Overall, the game would also positively impact participation in jump training. Players also suggested improvements on the game, such as improving the game world and providing more feedback. The players reported higher SSQ nausea scores after playing the game. We suspected the increased score might be due to the sweating item of SSQ, and our additional analysis, excluding this item, supports this assumption. Therefore, we emphasize the potential overlap between cyber sickness and physical activity symptoms. Our results showed no significant improvement in the energetic and balanced subcategories of mood. We suspect that this might be due to the player's feeling of exhaustion after playing the game and might be affected by their feeling of mastery, which was not particularly high. The players were able to increase their personal technique score in the final level, but not their jump height. This matched the domain experts' feedback that muscular changes take multiple weeks, whereas technical improvements are quickly realizable. We also provide design implications. For example, we noticed that the frequent tapping and jumping led to unnoticed forward movements that required players to monitor their position to prevent leaving the play area. This effect is also one of the potential safety concerns. We learned that current VR hardware has its limitations when it comes to tracking explosive full body movements. So we see the automated feedback mainly as a tool supporting players' critical reflection on their performance, not as a replacement. Lastly, we talked about our experiments with various movement patterns. For example, we explained how we used resting passages, walking patterns, and stand switches to get fluent movements. And we discussed how to match our adaptive difficulty with players' fitness level and improvement and noted the difficulties of it. Altogether, we explored an interesting new touch to VR XR games. With these insights, it becomes easier to develop engaging training applications that target the lower body. Thank you for listening to this talk. Please refer to the paper for more details and contact me or my co-authors with any questions.